G'day guys, welcome back once again to the True Footy YouTube channel for my weekly tip show. I'm currently atop the True Footy tipping competition and I know that's not gonna last, so for now I'm going to milk that. Round six was probably the easiest round to tip so far this year. Every one of the competitions scored between nine and seven. Hopefully we could all put together a good second week in a row. So let's look at the games. First game of the week on Friday night is Collingwood hosting the power at Marvel Stadium. Other than a big upset loss to the Eagles in round three, the Pies have really given us no reason to doubt that they're a contender this year. After punishing the Lions in Brisbane a couple weeks ago, the Pies then took on a red-hot Essendon and got the job done in one of the better Anzac Day clashes we've seen in a few years. It was ugly at times, but at this stage of the season, it's all about banking the wins. The power are red-hot at the moment. They belted the Eagles in Perth and did enough early to overcome a fast-finishing North Melbourne side. Travis Boak in particular is, as I've said, in career best form. They've also got guys like Rockliffe and Wines getting the job done in the midfield. Sam Gray was also one of the best performed players across the whole league last round and he kicked four goals and had 28 possessions against the Roos. The point being, the two sides going into this game will both be pretty confident. Despite these two teams being quality sides, I expect a scrappy dour affair and I think the Pies will win this by just seven points. Next up, we have the Dees hosting the Hawks at the MCG on Saturday. The Dees' horror start to the season continues and they sit on the bottom of the ladder after six rounds. They were better last week against the Tigers, but still didn't even crack half of Richmond's score. They did have some shining lights, Gordon probably played his best game for the season and Melcher moved to the midfield and did really well with 25 possessions. Nonetheless, it's getting harder and harder to see how they can pull this season around. Now the Hawks did play a bit of a get out of jail free card last week against the Blues. Carlton kicked eight of the first 10 goals before the Hawks eventually overcame them in the dying minutes in Tasmania. O'Meara was probably the best player across the whole league last round. He's got to be having what I would say is a breakout season. He's really taking his game to the next level. This is a tough game to pick because I actually think both sides could be vulnerable here. That being said, I'm going to tip concern conservatively here and say the Hawks lift and make amends to win by 31 points. Next up we have the Giants hosting the Saints over at Manuka Oval in Canberra. Despite two blips this year against both WA teams, the Giants look every bit a top four contender this year. Last week they were too good for their crosstown rival Sydney, but it has to be said the Swans aren't a particularly difficult opponent this year. The Giants midfield just keeps chugging along. You've got Cornelio, Hopper, Taranto and Kelly forming a very dangerous quartet this year. Whitfield did cop a bad cork last week, so I'm hoping half of my DT as much as anything, that he'll be all right this week. The Saints, to some extent, came crashing back down to earth last week with a big loss at home to the Crows. As pleased as I have been for the Saints in what they've been able to produce so far this season, there's no doubt in my head that their ladder position is a little bit inflated at the moment. While I don't see the Saints as giant killers this week, I would describe them as plucky. That's why I give them a decent chance to take it up to the Giants this week in Canberra. The Giants will be too good, but they'll only win this game by 14 points. Next up, the Lions host the Swans at the Gabba. After two bad games in a row and then a bad half against the Suns last week, the Lions are really starting to regain their confidence. At times, it looked like the Suns had their measure last week, but the class of the Lions prevailed and they were just too dominant in the second half. We have all come to expect a Lockie Neal BOG performance in a Brisbane win, but Mitch Robinson was also really good with three goals. The Swans have won the last six clashes at the Gabba, but given the Lions have been rebuilding that whole time, I don't know how much you could take from that. The further this season progresses, the more apparent it is that Swans might be heading for a bottom six or worse position. They were dumped fairly easily by the Giants last week, and I know the Giants are good, but I don't see the Swans getting over the Lions this week. I think Brisbane win this game by 28 points. Next up, we have the Dogs and the Tigers going head-to-head -head at Marvel Stadium. The Doggies did start this year 2-0, but since then, there's been a string of honourable losses punctuated by one bad loss to Carlton. I don't think they're playing bad football at all, but if they don't start winning soon, you probably write them off as a finals chance. They played with pretty good spirit last week against the Dockers, which I think is actually a pretty difficult trip to Perth now. That being said, it's quite evident that the same regulars are carrying most of the load there at the Dogs. Now the Tigers for mine, despite all the early panic about their injuries, they're proving that they're well and truly back in premiership contention. Grimes, Vlostun and Huli are doing a great job holding up the defense without Rance there. They've also been lucky to have someone like Jack Ross come in in the absence of Cochin and play a pretty important midfield role. He had 28 possessions again last week. Jack Rewalt is set for a lengthy spell out of the side, but they did just recruit Tom Lynch, so I don't think they're gonna have too much trouble there. The Tigers, I think, are actually in a decent spot at the minute, and they're gonna win this game by 32 points. Next up, we have the Eagles and the Gold Coast Suns over at Optus Stadium in Perth. I don't know why I said over. I live in Perth. Last year's premiers sit three and three and are in a bit of a spot of bother at the moment. Truthfully, they can probably only be happy with two out of six performances so far this year, which is quite telling. In consecutive weeks, they've been tailed up by far superior sides in the Power and the Cats. 
Other than one or two exceptions, they've probably struggled to find a winner across the whole field in either game. They look pretty physically spent and well short of confidence, and this game is becoming a bit of a do or die for them. The Suns also sit three and three, but you could say they're probably a little bit more positive about their outlook at the moment. They did lose the Q clash by 50 points, but were pretty solid in the first half, and at the end of the day, Brisbane are just a far superior side. They are a young team, the Suns, so we do give them leeway, and most people expected them to finish bottom two at the very least this year. The challenge for them will be to continue this momentum for as long as they can this season. They are a plucky side like the Saints, and other than the last two weeks, I feel like they're pretty good at not getting themselves belted. It's crazy to think where we are after six rounds, but I actually think this game is a genuine 50-50. I'll tip conservatively here and say the Eagles get a much needed win, but they're only going to win this game by four points. Next up, we have a bottom of the table clash between Carlton and North Melbourne. Now the Blues have put in two improved performances in a row. They beat the Dogs fairly comfortably and then they pushed Hawthorne all the way in Tasmania and probably should have won that game. They kicked eight of the first 10 goals, but ultimately were overrun by a much more seasoned side. This has invited more criticism that Brendan Bolton is happy to take an honorable loss. I think this is an absolute bullshit criticism. It's evident to me, and I think other people as well, that Carlton are an improved side on last year. I don't feel the need to keep punching down on them. Now I understand it's important for them to actually win games because what was it 36 games and only three wins across that period? Nonetheless so they're obviously not getting belted anymore and the side's moving in the right direction so I feel like it's just needless criticism. North on the other hand have really struggled to improve on last year's encouraging improvement. For a side that has a fair bit of experience and even talent they'd be really disappointed with where they sit currently and they're actually below Carlton on the ladder. I think North match up pretty well against the Blues and I do remember they did an absolute number of them last year in Hobart. Despite the Blues playing pretty well in recent weeks, I think the Roos are just under more pressure to win this game and that will see them get the points. I tip North by 28 points. Next up, we have the highly anticipated clash of the Cats and the Bombers at the MCG. The Cats have been brilliant so far this season and in my eyes are the clear form team of the competition. They absolutely belted the Eagles last week, although we do probably have to put it in perspective that the Eagles are not exactly a hard team to beat this year. On the whole though, the Cats have been very impressive this year and it's going to take a good team to stop them. Now the Bombers have really turned over a new leaf this season after their two terrible opening rounds. They've they belted the Ds, the Lions, and the Roos in recent weeks, and were pretty close to taking down the Pies on Anzac Day as well. Danaher's back, and he's reminded us what a prodigious talent he is. Between he and Stringer, I think they could form a pretty dangerous one-two punch and will be an absolute headache for opposition defences this year. When tipping, I do like to look historically at how the teams match up on each other. I do notice that the Dons have won the last two clashes between these sides, despite the Geelong being better both seasons. I'm going to tip a real roughie here and say the Bombers win this by 15 points. Our final game of the round is the Adelaide Crows hosting the Dockers at Adelaide Oval on Sunday. Along with Geelong and Essendon, this is probably the game I'm looking forward to the most next round. After a sluggish start of the season, the Crows have built up a little momentum. They beat the Suns comfortably and also travelled to Marble and beat the Saints there. Walker, Betts and Murphy are all getting amongst the goals and Sloan has been an absolute warrior in the midfield this year. They sit 3-3 three and three here, but a win here is a good opportunity for them to bounce straight back into the eight. Now the Dockers, it has to be set, are in some kind of form. They knocked off the Giants and the Dogs the last two weeks and currently sit second on the ladder. Tabiner, McCarthy, Matera all kicking goals, while Fife, Mundy and Brad Hill are all turning out really good numbers in the midfield. They're Ball movement has been better than it has been in years, and I think they're a real chance to knock the Crows off this week. What does work against the Dockers, though, is their former Adelaide Oval. They haven't actually won a game there since 2015, but more than that, they've actually had some real big beltings at the hand of Adelaide and Port in recent years. I'll still tip the Crows, but I think they're going to come from behind and win this by 11 points. Now, that is all the predictions for the round. I hope once again to see your predictions in the comments. It doesn't necessarily have to be your tips. You could be just make a prediction about a round or a player who's going to do really well. I'd also like to see your nominations for a potential upset of the round. We do know there is an upset almost every week. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. We will see you next week.